So we are going to talk a little bit today about controlling POA. And um, I want to thank everyone who watches. And hopefully this benefits all the fescue freaks out there. I know that I enjoy the dark color turf. And I do not want to look at lime green POA. So today we have the pleasure of speaking with Aaron Hathaway. And um, we're going to learn how to control some POA. Sweet. Right. It's good to be here. Thank you, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah. How are you doing? So I guess the big news is we have a product that is returning. So I wanted to get my hands on this product a couple of years ago and it had went away and um, I couldn't grab any. So now I've got the opportunity here in a couple of weeks to, um, to get me some and give it a shot. Yeah, no doubt. It's back. So I've been excited that it's back. Uh, the product's called Velocity, and I think it came out in 2004. So mm -hmm. uh, I worked for a company called New Farm, and and so it came out before I worked for New Farm, um, mm -hmm. and then went away in in 2018. So it's it's uh, I'm excited because it's going to be priced better for for people who might want to use it in lawns, um, for lawn care operators, for people like yourself uh, mm -hmm. who might actually want to buy some and use it. Uh, it Definitely. wasn't it wasn't priced as well as it is now. So there's more potential for more people to use it to control annual bluegrass or poa triv uh, in lawns than there was before. Yes, sir. Yeah, and actually, on the, it's pretty crazy. On the way here to jump in, I stopped and uh, let's see here. This is a yard right down the street from me, and I have watched that over the last three years continue to take over. So for those that don't know, that's poetry of, and it's, it's a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's way worse than the Poana myself. Um, but anyway, that's, that is something that, um, like I struck up a conversation with him for a few minutes and he's super interested too. So cool. Yeah. I mean, you said it, uh, I, I think poetry of is worse than any bluegrass as well. It's more of a perennial it's, mm -hmm. it's weakly stoloniferous, which means it can spread a little better than, than Anya bluegrass. Um, seems to be a little bit stronger. Can It's got longer legs through the summer and can do better through the summer than Anya bluegrass. So, um, you know, in a lawn 
lawn situation, we have a perennial plant. So you have tall fescue, which is a perennial plant that keeps coming back. And one thing uh, we often say in weed science is that the weed mimics the crop. So we often have weeds and in, in lawns that are a perennial as well, because we're not disturbing that soil or we're not rototilling it, things like that. So um, I think especially in your area, especially in tall fescue where nothing goes dormant completely, um, you tend to see maybe more poetry of, like I said, especially in your area, I think as you move uh, further north, you still get a lot of poetry, but you'll tend to see more. I'm in Michigan, so I see a lot of annual bluegrass, probably more annual bluegrass than poetry. And then once you get into dormant, dormant warm season grasses, you'll probably see more annual bluegrass in those situations as well. Yeah. But poetry is tough. There aren't a ton of answers for it. We don't have a lot of products that you can apply to control poetry selectively especially mm -hmm. in cool season grasses. Well, see, the, the thing that I see about it is like I had poa annual problems in the past before the turf was thick as it is. Yeah. So if you do have a thicker stand of turf and you don't have bare spots, you have a better chance of beating out poa anna where it doesn't matter what the tree of like you keep fighting and it's, it goes dormant and you think, Oh, well, it's, it's gone. No big deal. And the next thing you know, it pops back and it's larger. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do something about it, it just keeps getting larger. And last year I got sick of looking at the couple of places I had. So I got aggravated one day and I went out with the non-selective and I popped about 20 spots. They were about the size of a group for a uh, grapefruit. But the problem is, you know, you got to spray larger than they are to make sure you get it all. Well, then I got ugly spots until I can get germination and, you know, turf back. And one thing that I've really learned in this is, Mature fescue is valuable. Once you get it past a year old, it's tough. It's stronger. You don't want to get rid of it. So a selective, something like this, and it's going to make life a whole lot easier for me. Exactly. For exactly me. So in others. Yeah, no doubt. No, I think sometimes we underestimate competition and what that does for us. You said that you would, you use a non-selective product to, to pop some spots, right? To not, uh, to, you know, about 20 spots out. Mm -hmm. And what, what that does, even if you have some fescue in the middle of that spot, a little bit here and there, uh, you end up killing those plants as well. And so you lose out on the competition from those plants that you would otherwise have if you're using a selective herbicide. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I think we underestimate how much power there is in, in that, in that competition that those other plants bring. They're able to fill in those voids a little faster because you didn't kill all of it in that spot. And um, it can weaken any, if those poetry plants are able to survive a little bit, um, there's less chance if you have other plants around it, surrounding it. So selective products can be more effective. Obviously you're gonna see, you're not gonna necessarily end up with dead spots depending on depending on what your poetry spots look like. Mm -hmm. If it's like that first picture I pulled up. Yeah. <laughs> No, my spots, my spots are not like that. Um, what's really crazy also is this past weekend, I took off to Savannah for a concert and we went out and walked in this park and look at this. This is just tons of Poana. Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure what their turf was there. It's definitely dark. It's, I don't know if it is a fescue or a blue gray. It was really short. It hadn't been mowed, but the Poa just, you know, like I, everybody's out there playing and enjoying a pretty day and I'm out there scoping out POA. <laughs> sure. It's just ruined, it just ruined it for me. Like, you know, yeah. the whole place was consistent. It had been beautiful. And but, it's not even on its, at its ugliest it's, stage yet. It's not no. producing all that seed yet, which is when it really sticks out when it really looks bad. So yeah, in, in a, in a little while, it'll look even worse. Yes, sir. Yeah. What concert did you see out there? Riley Green. Riley Green, okay. Yeah, I like his music a good bit. So, one question I do have on Poana and seeds, I don't know if, if you know or not. Um, how mature do those seeds have to be before they will germinate in the future? You know, like it, it, sure. how long is, is, there a, is there an answer there? Because mm -hmm. I've got, you know, I don't know, 15 places out here, which is really nice as far as Poana for me. Um, my poan is down the edge where everybody runs off the road and compacts the crap out of the soil and, you know, basically kills off my fescue for me because they won't stay on the road. Mm -hmm. But I try to get out there and either 
burn it with a torch thinking that, you know, Hey, I'm going to kill the plant in the seed too, or I pull it up and throw it away. But even when you're pulling up, you may, a few seeds may fall, fall off the stalk or whatever. And I'm just wondering, like, does it have to be aged? Is, is it younger? I mean, yeah, I mean, annual bluegrass, you know, we talk about poa triv and poa annua. They're both poas. And then, um, you know, Kentucky bluegrass is a desirable turf grass that you'll see further north more often, um, which is poa pretensis. So they're all poa species. But one thing that sets, you'll see all of them produce seed, but one thing that sets poa annua or annual bluegrass apart from those other two is it will produce tons and tons of seed. I mean, it goes to seed like crazy. It's, mm -hmm. It acts more like a true annual, I guess. Um, and, you know, as you move further south, you'll it'll die in the heat and then it'll come back from seed often. And so it produces tons of seed. The crazy thing about annual bluegrass is, and you probably never see your tall fescue produce seed, right? Maybe here and there you'll see a few. I do see some. And as I've okay. got into better cultivars, that was one reason I moved into better fescue cultivars was to seed to see less seed heads sure because your cheaper your cheaper cultivars you know produce more seed heads so. yeah and your bluegrass though is notorious for just producing tons and tons of seed and um it doesn't matter what height you're mowing at so even in you know golf courses and your bluegrass goes crazy just because you're mowing it at a half inch on a fairway or a tee you're mowing at uh, an eighth of an inch or less on a putting green, still, those plants are still producing tons of seed. And that seed goes, it gets produced on the plant, gets disseminated into the soil, and then it sits in the soil and it kind of bides its time just waiting for that um, chance Perfect. to germinate and become a part of the stand. And so um, you asked, how long does it take before? So an annual bluegrass can, plant can produce seed. It can self-pollinate. That one plant can self-pollinate that seed so it's ready, it's mature. And by the time it produces that seed and it's sitting on that plant, all, sometimes all you need is 24 hours and it's ready. It's mature, mm -hmm. it's viable. Once it gets disseminated or mowed off, um, it goes into the soil and it's, it's ready to germinate when the conditions are right. And so you couple those mm -hmm. two things together, lots and lots of seed production. Those seeds are, are mature very, very quickly. You don't have to wait for a lot to happen. Um, that's one of the reasons why Hanyu bluegrass is sticks it's around. The, it's the devil. It's such a tough weed. Yeah. <laughs> it's the devil. And I mean, it lives, it lives to, um, reproduce. I mean, that's, that's, that's all I mean. Cause it knows it's going to kick the bucket as soon as we get to 80. Mm -hmm. So it's doing everything it can. Yep. From the and that's of kind of, that's kind of the job. Like you said, that's kind of the job mm -hmm. of an annual mm -hmm. produces that seed. It's job's done. Yeah. And now the heat comes it didn't put much energy into into rootstock or anything like that, and it succumbs to the heat and dies. But it's not like it didn't leave anything behind. And so, anytime you know you get some tall fescue, you get some really hot summers. You thin out that tall fescue over the summer, and that's when annual bluegrass just germinates the the following yeah. fall. It overwinters, it produces more seed, and then it doesn't matter if you you kill everything and reseed. This the seed is still in that soil, and that's the tough part about it. Yeah. Is uh, even when you see the plant disappear, it hasn't really disappeared. There's plenty of seed in the soil. No, that one plant has made hundreds of more plants possibly mm -hmm. if you don't do something about it. And anytime that you have bare ground, I always say it's game on for germination, you know, unwanted germination yeah. because it's bare ground. And especially if you go out there and you rough it up and you core plug or you do something disturb, you know, you flip that seed up where it can get, you know, closer to the top of the soil and rain comes, you're going to have germination. No doubt. Same's true of Poa Triv. Um, and maybe Poa Triv is a little worse in certain, certain areas at least, um, just because it'll produce seed and it has some vegetative uh, reproductive parts that it can regrow from. So some of those weak stolons, um, it might put a little more energy into a root system so it can survive a little longer. So it's definitely, I would say Poe Triv is definitely tougher to kill than annual bluegrass mm -hmm. um, pound for pound. Well, the bad thing is, is to me, you know, the Poa A, Poa annual comes along, you see it, it's terrible looking, it's limey, it disappears, you sort of forget about it. If you have a thick stand of turf or you do something, 
then possibly it doesn't come back. But with the triv, if you don't take care of it, it it goes dormant or whatever from the heat. You forget about it, and then it yeah. comes back larger. You know, like them, like you're saying, it just keeps sort of spreading under the ground. And yep, you know, like that place there, I pulled that picture up of. I've watched it over the last couple of years. It just keeps, just keeps going and going. So yeah, that's years of those patches. You know, the patches that you had in your yard that you killed mm -hmm. non-selectively. That's years and years of those patches just getting bigger and bigger, and then coalescing, coming together, and then, I mean, you saw portions of that lawn that was all poetry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And the only other thing that I'll say, like I've done for poetry, which is a lot of work is I have sprayed those spots, let them die out, take a sod cutter, cut that spot out, go rob sod off the back of the property and put in that spot. But it's a lot of work. I'd mm -hmm. much rather, you know, buy a selective yeah. herbicide and take care of it. And I'd much rather do that instead of sure. you know, doing that kind of thing. It's a ton of work. Yeah, it is a ton but of it's, work instant competition too. So makes sense. I mean, that's one way to go about it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you want to look at this? Um, what do you, you want me to pull something up for you to sure speak on? The you slide. can pull up those slides and I can, I can kind of introduce velocity PM, reintroduce velocity PM. So um, some of my colleagues laugh at me because I'm, <laughs> I worked with Velocity. I, I worked at Michigan State University for a long time doing research in, in turf grass, a lot of weed science type research. And Velocity was one of the first products that I worked with a lot, like year after year, mm -hmm. uh, learning the ins and outs of it. Um, and so Velocity is a product that I knew really, really well back in the early 2000s, just because I was spraying it a lot for research purposes. And so it was around. And by the time I got to the industry side of the business at New Farm, it was gone. And so a product that I worked so much with, all of a sudden I get into industry and it's gone. And so I was excited for it to come back. Um, I've been lobbying for it to come back. And uh, here it is. So I always tell people that it's like an old friend who who moved away for a while. Yeah. And uh, now we moved back and I get to get to talk about him and, and hang out with him a lot more. So well, I'm ready to hang out with him. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> So Velocity PM is a, it truly is a POA management tool. That's what it is. It's uh, claim to fame is that it is a herbicide that will actually kill POA triv and POA annua. Those two grasses, grass species in particular, it has some activity on some, some broad leaves as well, but those are the main targets for Velocity PM. And so I remember the very first um, marketing campaign for Velocity when it came out was a silver bullet uh, ripping through a, a annual bluegrass plant. And so it, they called it the silver bullet for annual bluegrass. And we always used to tell people, uh, just be careful. It will actually kill annual bluegrass. So a lawn that, you know, you showed that picture of that lawn that was, uh, man, 80% poetriv, and at least in some portions and some sectors of that lawn, um, same thing, like, be careful. You're going to kill poa with this product. And so that's what this product is. It is safe, you know, for you, the uh, fescue freak. It's safe on tall fescue, which is awesome. It can be used in a lot of cool season grasses. We don't have a ton of tools for POA control and cool season grasses. We have a few. And so um, I'm excited for more use, like I said, in the lawns. It's been used a ton on golf courses before. It's mm -hmm. so it's safe on Kentucky blue, or sorry, it's safe on creeping bent grass. So a lot of golf courses have creeping bent grass fairways and tees. And so it was used a lot in that particular area. But it's also safe on tall fescue. It's safe on fine fescue, um, safe on perennial ryegrass. The one that it's not super safe on is Kentucky bluegrass. So if you have a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, um, it has marginal safety on Kentucky bluegrass. And if you remember, I was talking about Poa annua, Poa triv, those are the targets. Kentucky bluegrass is Poa pretensis. So it's a much more closely related um, turf grass species to Poa annua and Poa triv. So it makes sense that there's just marginal safety on Kentucky bluegrass. But with all that said, especially in your area, I think people can get a lot of use out of velocity, uh, especially at the price point where it is right now. So I'm excited for more to see more use in lawns than we saw in the previous version of velocity out there mm -hmm. 
Now, one quick thing, which, you know, most of us are cool season fighting a cool season problem, but it is also labeled for warm season. It So as of right now, it's not labeled for all warm season grasses. Okay. It's particularly labeled for use in dormant Bermuda grass. Okay. That, that can be non-overseeded dormant Bermuda grass or overseeded dormant Bermuda grass. It happens to be though that it's it's very safe on actively growing warm season grasses too. So actively growing Bermuda, zoysia, um, it's safe on those, but those are not on the label. So if you read the label, what's on the label is use in dormant Bermuda grass, non-overseeded and overseeded. So if it's overseeded with ryegrass, it's safe in ryegrass. And then there is no language about any other warm season grasses on it. So if you read through, you're not gonna find any other um, information about use in warm season grasses. Our goal here is to kind of um, test test uses and warm season grasses a little bit more and eventually get those on the label so mm -hmm. that people feel more comfortable applying it in, in those warm season grasses. But it's safe on a lot of turf grasses out there. Yeah. Well, to me, I mean, where it shines is cool season in a cool season problem. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that's where it's going to shine because yep. there's no such thing other than this that I know of that is a selective product that you can do this with. Sure. There's a few out there. Um, there's a couple out there uh, right now. There's one called Tenacity. Yeah. Tenacity has decent control of Poa Annua, but not great on Poa Triv. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's one called Exonerate. And so those two products are out there. There's one called Prograss as well. So um, there's three products out there that can be used in cool season, but uh, maybe in some ways they're a little more finicky, but um, poetry is really the rough one. We, we don't have a ton of answers to, to control poetry. And so those ones do a pretty good job on poet annual in certain situations, but, um, I don't know that anything compares for poetry control to velocity PM. Okay. Well, man, I knew of tenacity and some of the others, mm -hmm. but, um, I haven't had phenomenal luck with those. Yeah. So that's one reason I didn't mention them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they tend to require, um, I don't know, tenacity can work. Um, th those aren't my products. And so I'm, I'm not here just to, just mm -hmm. to talk about velocity, but to talk about the issue, which is any bluegrass and poetry. Mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. um, tenacity can work well, but you need a lot of applications. You tend yes. to need more mm -hmm. applications to really get the activity you need. Uh, exonerate can work well if you use it in the spring or the fall, but you can sometimes have some injury issues, but but they can they have their place as well. And um, to be honest with you, it's good that we have a few products because um, resistance issues exist in annual bluegrass in particular, not as much in, in Poa Triv that I know of, but in Poa Annua, there are resistance issues. So having products that cover different modes of action can be can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just kind of in the introduction, this is, disclaimer, this is a golf course fairway. So it's mowed at about a half an inch. But I think this gets the point across. And this was, man, this was a trial that I did at Michigan State University maybe back in uh, the year 2000. And it, it may have started before that, 99 maybe. But anyway, if you look on this picture that's on the left, that is 100% annual bluegrass. And so 100% annual bluegrass, and that's velocity. It's applied three times in the same year. They're monthly applications. I think it was applied um, July, August, September. So monthly applications, a little bit higher rates than I'm going to recommend now, but um, you see how well it killed in your bluegrass. What maybe you don't see as well is in the very top of that plot, and the plot that I'm talking about is what's inside those four painted, um, you know, there's T's and crosses mm -hmm. uh, inside those four paint. It's dead turf right now, but at the very top of the plot, you can kind of make out three, they're cup cutters. So that's a, it's a golf term, but it's about four inch um, diameter circles, um, plugs. Yeah. Or circles of creeping bent grass up at the top. Those mm -hmm. could very well be tall fescue. Those could very well be rye grass. Um, but that's creeping bent grass up there, but it's, it's safe on these other turf species too. If you fast forward two years after that photo on the left was taken, you see the photo on the right. 
And you see, we continued those applications, even though we're looking at bare ground on the left uh, left side. We continued making those monthly applications, July, September, sorry, July, August, September, uh, for two more years. And this is after three years of making those three applications per year. And now what you're seeing is creeping bent grass. And you're seeing it come out of those plugs that were at the top of the plot and move down. Mm -hmm. And there were probably a few plants, you know, here and there that kind of filled in as well. But we did nothing other than just spray those plots three times a year for three years. And this is what happened. It went from 100% annual bluegrass to we're still not completely there, but we didn't add any seed to this or anything. The seed that was there was only annual bluegrass seed in the soil. No bent grass seed was added to this other than those three plugs at the top of the plot. But eventually it filled filled in with, with uh, creeping bent grass. And so creeping bent grass is a really good mover. It's got these stolons, so it it keeps kind of moving along, along um, maybe kind of like poetry. And so maybe you you certainly wouldn't see this kind of movement from tall fescue. You would need to get some seed in there because you need some stolons or rhizomes to move those plants along. But mm -hmm. I think this really well illustrates how effective velocity is at killing any bluegrass and then how safe it can be on these other cool season species by even letting uh, this particular species, creeping bent grass, take over that plot over a three year period. So to the right of the two year test outside of your white paint marks, mm -hmm. is that Poana that you see all dotted yep. over to the right? Okay. Yep. It doesn't look as yellow as the plot as the area mm -hmm. on the left, mm -hmm. but we may just had more fertility on it this, at this point or something like that. And so, mm -hmm. but it, certainly during certain times of the year, it would look as yellow as you see on the left, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Surrounding it is all any bluegrass. Okay, cool deal. And so um, the keys to success, and I have a little, um, there's a little typo there, but the keys to success is that velocity works best as the temperatures increase. And so if I had my very you know best management practices for people who are going to spray velocity and want really good success at killing either annual bluegrass or poa triv is waiting until those temperatures begin to warm up now. So I don't know where you're at right now, Oli, um, but you guys are probably starting to warm up. Mm -hmm. I know even here in Michigan, we're, we're starting to warm up already here in February. Um, so you see the target there is 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to tell you that generally you're going to have more success as, a, as you're at the warmer side of that that range of temperatures than you are at the cooler side of the range of te temperatures. The reason for that is because you want plants that are growing. And so both annual bluegrass and poetry, they're going to grow a little bit more as those temps increase. And the hotter they are, those plants will even be more stressed. And so that kind of aids control when they're a little bit more stressed. But I understand that people aren't going to want to wait too long. So the key is to get into that pretty consistent temperatures of at least 60 degrees. And when you're in those lower temps, expect that it might take a little bit longer. Maybe you'll need an extra app in there, but the warmer tends to be better for, for uh, better control. The other thing that these are gonna do is if you make those apps before any seed head production takes place, it's really gonna limit any seeds that are produced by those plants pretty well. Um, one thing to watch out for is, you know, sometimes, you think about it with a, any herbicide, if you apply it at a, at a certain rate and you get decent kill of certain plants, sometimes you think, man, if I just, if I just go to the high side of the rate, then I'm going to get even better control. Well, sometimes with these grasses, it's all about making more applications, not necessarily just increasing the rate. Because often it's about these uptake events. A plant can only take up so much of what is sprayed at one time. So what it's supposed to say is a 2x rate is not equal to twice the control. And so you'll see in the in the program that I'm gonna talk about here for uh, POA control in fescue or whatever lawn that you have, whether it's ryegrass fescue or fine fescue um, or dormant Bermuda grass, that uh, you need at least two applications. The more applications you have, the better, but you're gonna need at least two applications to get good control. And so applications, the number of applications matters. The other thing that matters is that um, interval between applications. If you wait too long, that POA will tend to just completely recover before you make the second application. 
and you don't want that to occur. You kind of want to kick it while it's down. Mm -hmm. So make an application 14 to 21 days later, you're going to make another one. So these, all these things are fairly important when we're talking about getting effective control. Um, and then the key is stick with the program. If you make one application, this is true of so many grass herbicides out there. You make one application and then just walk away. It may, the POA may look like it's going to, um, to completely die just from that one app, but you, you often still need to come back and hit it again, make sure that it's going to be killed by that program, not just a single app. So once you get it weakened, go ahead and finish it off. Don't, exactly. Don't let it be like these horror movies that you watch that they shoot them in the leg. And the next thing you know, they run them down and, and kill you. So <laughs> exactly. Go ahead and finish the job. That's the key. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So um, next slide. Yep. Next slide. And this is the actual program. So if, if you have a tall fescue lawn, perennial ryegrass, like I mentioned, or fine fescue or a mix somewhere in there. Um, as I mentioned, there is some safety in Kentucky bluegrass, but it's really, really dependent on variety. So different cultivars tolerate velocity differentially, which means for you, you can test velocity on your particular cultivars. There's so many cultivars out there. We've tested on some, but there's just no way that we can test all the cultivars. There's no way that we can test every new cultivar that's coming out. So you could test it on your particular um, cultivar or cultivars of Kentucky bluegrass and see how safe it is. It, it's very safe on some and it's not safe on others. So it, like I said, it's very dependent, but it is safe on tall fescue, ryegrass, fine fescue, dormant Bermuda grass, whether it's overseeded or not. The program is point number four there. It's 2.25 fluid ounces per acre applied twice at a 14 to 21 day interval. And so that's a really low use rate. This product is very low use rate. And so if you buy it, it comes with a little five mil syringe. So if you're mixing in a backpack or something like that, spot treating, something like that, you really will need that five mil syringe to measure out uh, the correct amount for something like a backpack. If it's a bigger tank, maybe it's not a big issue, but 2.25 fluid ounces per acre each time. If you wanted to, you could come back with a third application and even take more of it out. But those two applications are gonna do a pretty good job um, at taking out that POA. Then after this, and I think this is an uh, important point to make, the nice thing about Velocity is it doesn't linger in the soil very long. You can actually interseed, add some seed to that soil 10 days after the last application. That's, that so was going to be one of my questions. Yep. Right there. Okay. So that's a big key because mm -hmm. getting that seed in there, remember annual bluegrass produced lots of seed. If you have tall fescue, it didn't produce much seed that was added to the soil. And so it may have produced a, a little bit, but nothing compared to the POA. So being able to intercede in these areas can be really important. Mm -hmm. Bring the, bring the competition back, bring it back. hundred percent. So hundred percent. Now is, is 2.25 uh, to the acre. Is mm -hmm. that considered the high rate or no, sir? You, you could go at a higher rate. Um, I think you can apply as much as four and a half fluid ounces per acre in one application. Okay. I think that's what the label says. Mm -hmm. um, and you could do that, certainly, but you're going to get more out of splitting that rate up into two separate applications. Yeah. That higher, the, the higher one, if you apply one application of four and a half fluid ounces per acre, um, I mean, you'll see some fireworks, but you'll get more out of two applications. Um, generally the more applications you can make the better. Yeah. Just keep chopping at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you have some options you, you can apply. I believe the yearly limit is nine fluid ounces per acre. So you can get up to that yearly limit in a lot mm -hmm. of different ways, but this is a really good program right here for a lot yeah. of people. The other thing is not only, you know, while you're doing this cleanup on, you know, your POAs, you're also labeled, Let's see, I'd print something off somewhere where there's other. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. There's a lot of broadleaf. Yeah, a lot of broadleaf material. Herbis, or sorry, a lot of broadleaf weeds on that label as well. Yeah, because I mean, like this time of year, a lot of people are fighting henbit, chickweed. Um, mm -hmm. Some people with yellow nut sedge. That'd be me and you will get together later, and I want to really dive into yellow nuts or nut yeah. sedge. 
Yeah, I'm um, looking forward to that. I hate nut sedge just like I hate the limey green pole. Sure. But what's cool is, you know, like this will get your chickweed, clover, yep. dandelions, hen bit, you know, the kind of stuff that people are fighting this, you know, getting ready yep. to go into the season. You know, people's going to have yep. a little bit of clover, they're going to have chickweed, and they're going to have hen bit. Yeah, I actually think it's um, on the weeds listed on the label. It's very good. It'll give you, you know, maybe between 75 and 90 percent control of those weeds. So it's maybe not quite as good as our traditional broadleaf weed herbicides, but it'll give you good control overall on all those weeds. And we've just added some of the broadleaf weeds to this label that we we have pretty good experience with. It'll probably have more activity on other weeds that aren't on the label as well. Mm -hmm. Yellow, yellow nut sedge is on this label. It's more like suppression on yellow nut sedge on the small yellow nut sedge plants. But the time you're going to be using it is about perfect to get some of those newly emerging yellow nut sedge plants at which it should, it should provide pretty good control of those. Mm -hmm. Now my goal is to blanket spray. Now mm -hmm. I only have spots of stuff that I'm aware of, but my goal is to blanket spray. And the reason for it is what I've learned on three acres of actual turf. If you spot spray, you're just chasing your tail because you miss stuff that you either don't see because of your eyes or the sun, but you also miss a ton of stuff that's under the canopy that you just don't see because it's under the canopy. Yeah. Where spot spraying would never get a hold of that, where a blanket spray, once I've started doing blanket sprays, things are so much cleaner around here because I'm taking care of stuff that is small under the canopy that you would not see until it's poking through. I completely agree with that. I, I think... There's so many weeds that you just you just can't see them. You don't see them. Maybe maybe if you got on your hands and knees and really investigated, you you could find them. But they're mm -hmm. even difficult to identify as as different from your desirable turf. So it's sometimes really hard to tell what's there. And so I can see people using this. Agree as a blanket spray, especially in year one. Maybe year two or three, you come back and you're getting some spots. Because remember, there's seed in the soil. You're going to have these these weeds come back. Maybe if you're keeping up with this control in years, maybe two, maybe it's th year three, depending on how much you start with coming back. And, and maybe at that point, you're only uh, spot treating uh, certain areas that come back. So there's a lot of different, maybe long-term programs that you could think about. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything on here you want to cover. or It's basically what you were just telling us. Yeah. So. A lot of good information in here. It's just kind of like, like I said, the best management practices for mm -hmm. Velocity PM. It talks a lot about using it when it's a little bit warmer. It tends to be safer on your desirable species and more active on, on those POA species. Um, one thing that I can mention to people is we don't generally um, recommend the addition of a surfactant when you're using Velocity just because it's it's active enough on its own. And so, especially when you're trying to take a cool season grass out of a cool season turf lawn, uh, like you've already mentioned, Oli, is it's hard to find a selective material that kills one and not the other. And so you'll see, um, like on tall fescue, I just sprayed some tall fescue I have uh, on my lawn out here. And I did a, a one X rate, so that 2.25 fluid ounce per acre rate. And then I doubled it and then I multiplied it by four. So 1x, 2x, 4x. In the 10, you, the, the, the phyto that you see or the injury that you see looks more like kind of a PGR effect. You'll see a PGR effect from velocity where it slows growth. So while you're using it, that's one thing that you probably will see is it'll slow growth so that you just won't get a lot of new flush growth. And so you'll notice that part, but it's not it's not yellowing necessarily. It's not um, necrosis. It's more of a slowing of the growth. And that's the kind of, uh, if, if you want to call it phyto, that's the kind of thing you'll, you'll see. It's more of a PGR effect, in, in my opinion. Now, one thing you had said earlier about the poana seeds, does it work similar to a pre-emergent for poa? Uh, while it's in the soil. So if while it's still in the soil, so within you know, 10, 10 days. 12 days, it could. So if you had a seed germinate and that root takes up whatever velocity made it to the soil, you could weaken that plant and or kill it. But um, 
it doesn't have long residual. So it's not like a traditional pre-emergence that's going to sit there for a long time and give you that control. Um, at the very same time, though, you could you could put a pre-emergence down with it. That just limits your ability to intercede any anything into yeah. your lawn at that point. So, um, you know, not having residual uh, in the soil or very long residual in the soil, it's it's a plus and it's a minus. It's a plus in that you can add your seed whenever you're ready. Yeah. So that's a that's a big plus in, in my thought process. But um, but yeah, it's not not going to last long. So it's not going to give you this really long control of any new seed that germinates. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Cool deal. So in other words, it could be tank with tank mixed with your prodiamine or something is. Yep. Certainly could. Okay. Certainly could. This right. can be tank mixed with, um, you know, back in the, back when it was around for golf course superintendents, they used to tank mix it with, um, maybe a little bit of iron, a little bit of nitrogen to maybe mask that PGR effect that's happening, especially from the first app. But it can also be in, and this is maybe a piece of the program. There's so much research out there that's showing these, that shows that these herbicides that you're applying to kill one grass and not the other benefit so much from nitrogen. Because competition is such an important part. If you have enough nitrogen down to where your tall fescue or whatever your species is, is growing and is also able to compete for that space while you're spraying this herbicide, it can go a long way to providing even, even better control. And I've seen data out there that shows um, you can benefit from big amounts of nitrogen even. And so I know that's going to make you mow a lot more, but um, it can really help your desirable species to really take over that ground and to compete with the weed that you're in the process of killing. So no surfactant. No surfactant. What about water pH as far as like mixing in some ammonium sulfate to yeah. help your water situation? You could certainly put ammonium sulfate in the tank first and then add whatever. I mean, that's a fairly good process for almost anything out there mm -hmm. um, to tie up any any hard water situation that you may be dealing with. The pH, um, it's like any other herbicide that it does well in a pH from about, you know, six to eight. Um, but generally herbicides do better in a pH from about six to seven. So if you can keep it a little bit acidic, uh, herbicides in general, including velocity, do a little bit better. ALS inhibitors or sulfonylureas like velocity are interesting because uh, the research shows that you can actually get a better dispersal into water or suspension into water when the water's alkaline to begin with. <laughs> but then, like I said, generally it's better to have um, a water carrier that's a little more acidic if you can, okay. but not a huge, huge hurdle by any means. One fellow was asking about how's it work versus a uh, POA constrictor, which I think is just ethofumisate, right? Yeah, it is. It's ethofumisate. POA constrictor can work well, but if, you, if you've if you ever used uh, ethofumisate, you know it can be a touchy product. Um, it's one that you make fall applications. Sometimes you could follow it up in the spring, but usually it's two or three fall applications. Uh, maybe in lawns it's two, uh, and they used to use it on golf courses as well. And it can work really well some years where it takes that POA out over kind of over the winter, you spray it in the fall and then you come back in the spring and it's gone. And then other years, it just doesn't seem like you get much out of it. And so that's my experience with ethofumisate. This is a very different product in that you're not targeting the fall. You're not targeting that cool weather. You're targeting it um, as it warms up and you'll even get better control on, you know, the younger those plants are, the easier they are to control. But I could see people even, you know, building a program that includes both possibly, depending on what they want to get, kind of to combat even weed resistance, that kind of stuff. So uh, programs so, uh, certainly aren't out of the, the question. So use the etho, you know, like I know for us in North Carolina, the etho is recommended to be used like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yep. Um, but now does it have any effect on trivialis? I, not, not that I know of, but I could be I wrong. I think it has some, but I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure that it's all that great on poetry. Yeah. I've um, never heard it spoke about on poetry. The only other thing that I've heard spoke about on that is the uh, velocity, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Velocity in my experience is probably 
the best answer for poetry of, that we have in cool season turf. Um, I, I'm not as familiar with poet constrictor or, or ethyl fumicate for poetry. I just don't know. Uh, when mm -hmm. I used it in the north, it was more for for annual bluegrass. Used a lot on sports fields. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to um, using some. I can't wait. I know people are asking like when to expect it. Um, I think it's going to start shipping in a few weeks to distributors yeah. and dealers. Yep. And then so I think you can talk to your distributors right now, um, but it's going to be, a. I know it's meant to be available to them mid uh, March. So a couple weeks, they, mm -hmm. they should have availability. Yeah. I've been speaking with heritage. That's where I get a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I've, been, I've been bugging them, finding out when they're going to have it. So sure. Um, so so it's listening any day. To get on their website soon. Mm -hmm. But um now, do you want to speak on price or just wait till it gets in stores? Yeah, I guess um, I can give people a ballpark. Okay. Uh, just because prices could be different uh, for whatever reason here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but Velocity is going to be about $75 an acre for each application. So if you made, and that's at that 2.25 fluid ounce per acre rate. And it's so 16, if you made two, sorry, 16 total, ounce, 16 total ounce bottle. Yeah, it's a pint bottle, so 16 fluid ounces. So that pint bottle will be fairly expensive if you do your math um, because it covers a huge area. But the whole program, so 2.25 fluid ounces per acre applied twice, it's going to be about $150 per acre. So it's a lot cheaper than it used to be. Um, and our whole goal with that, or at least a portion of the goal with that, was to give lawn care opera operators at least the option to, to start thinking about using it. It was priced high enough to where uh, a lot of lawn care operators wouldn't even look at it before. Mm -hmm. I know when I was looking at it years ago, before it came off the shelf or whatever, it was upwards of 600, if not more. And I really wanted a bottle and you know it all depleted, so. Sure. But the other thing is, is you can have a good friend and you can, uh, that's right. Help each other out. That's right. So, you can. Well, I greatly appreciate it, man. And like I say, I hope, um, well, I don't hope we will, we'll get together in the future. Cause I want to do something on nuts edge. So mm -hmm. that is something I want to do here. I want to, um, definitely clean up because you mow, you got beautiful dark green stripes two days later. You got nuts, up. Speaking, yeah. uh, you know, four inches above the turf. And I, above it, yeah. in that. I want it gone. So yeah. that'll be our next get together. Yellow nuts edge is definitely, uh, maybe, if not the wheat, you know, you got wild violet. It depends on where you are in the country. But yellow nuts edge across the country is a weed I hear from a lot of lawn care operators. That's just painful to deal with. And so I'm looking forward to talking about it with the Oli and, and, uh, New Farm has a lot of great products uh, to control it, in, in my opinion, one of the best. So we'll, we'll get a chance to talk about that, and I'll talk about others as well. All right, let's do it. Cool. We'll stick around. Don't jump off yet. We'll end this live stream. Thanks to everybody who watched, and um, the goal is to get this on a podcast platform soon where you can listen to it driving to work. And um, anyone's got any questions for me, let me know. So. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Yeah. And thank you for um, the knowledge. Yeah. Thank you, Oli. Thanks, everybody.